<laughs> All right. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the State Operations Center. Uh, and uh, we're going to give you a quick update uh, on the wildfire response and the latest efforts across the state. Uh, that's involved in assisting all those that have been impacted by these wildfires. Uh, I'm Mark Gilarducci, I'm director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services here in California, and we're going to hear from uh, a number of other uh, public safety leaders to give you an update specifically on um, what has been going on and, and what the plan is moving forward. After today's press conference, we will uh, take your questions. Uh, let me start off by saying uh, again how um, how. Uh, uh, concerns we are for the communities that have been impacted, express our sympathy uh, for those who have had loss, and, and we know this is a very stressful time, um, and uh, many people have lost their homes, and we are going to be working closely with the county, the counties that have had in this loss, and, and we're working with our, our federal partners as well uh, in being able to uh, step in and, and assist where we can. Um, we know it's been an ex a stressful situation, and uh, we'll continue to think about uh, all of you in every decision that we make. Here at the State Operations Center, we are running a 24-7 operation. Uh, this multi-agencies, everybody who has a responsibility in responding to these fires is represented here at every level of government. Uh, and, and this center will remain fully activated uh, until we are uh, mitigating the situation completely. So we're continuing to be all hands on deck. Um, Currently, uh, we have thousands of uh, state, local, and federal firefighters uh, on the line, uh, over 13,000, and several hundred emergency management and law enforcement, as well as over 1,200 National Guard assets to support local authorities through this period of time. And you'll know more about that when we get specific briefings in a second. Uh, we've also reached out to our neighboring states and also out of country for additional assistance, uh, which is arriving as we speak, and we're very appreciative of our partner states for being able to provide these resources to us. So at this point, let me do this. I'll uh, turn it over uh, to our partnering uh, cooperating agencies. We're, we've been working here as a one team uh, effort to ensure that the state is completely coordinated and uh, all of the key resources are being met. So with that, I'm going to start off with uh, the director of the California Department of Forcing and Fire Protection, Cal Fire Chief Ken Pemlot. Thank you, Mark, and good morning. So since this uh, fire siege began uh, weeks ago in July, we've been tracking 16 uh, major fires uh, in the state. Since this began, over 320,000 acres uh, have burned in this siege. Currently, we have over 32,000 residents that remain evacuated uh, on various fires uh, within the state. Uh, as Director Gellarducci indicated, we have 13,000 firefighters on the fire lines just in California. Now, this fire challenge is not just limited to California. The entire western United States, including south into Texas, is experiencing significant fire conditions. And there are over 27,000 firefighters on the fire lines throughout the western United States. So almost half of those uh, are right here uh, in California. Uh, we are, uh, as was indicated, engaging in support from 17 other states from as far away as Maine and Florida. Uh, we have uh, all the aviation assets that are available in the system are not only deployed throughout California, but all of these other states. And so we continue to coordinate every day, actually every hour throughout the day. It's a very dynamic process, moving aircraft and resources from fire to fire and sharing those critical resources, not only within California, but with our, our partners in other states who are also experiencing some very difficult, difficult conditions. Uh, we will continue to look what our needs are. Our uh, goal here in particular is to ensure we're planning for the, the days ahead, not what's happening today, but what's going to be happening uh, in the days to come to ensure we have resources on the road uh, so that we can meet the threat that's coming uh, down the road. We're only uh, at the beginning of August. We've been seeing extreme fire conditions early uh, in the year. These kinds of conditions, you know, in past decades, we may have seen uh, a fire like we're seeing now in August or September. We are routinely now seeing fires reach 100,000 acres uh, several times in one month, and it's in July. So we have a long way to go uh, in this fire season. And as we saw last year, fire season can go right up through December uh, and into uh, the early parts of the winter. So we're prepared in this for the long haul. 
Uh, CAL FIRE is bringing on additional seasonal firefighters. We're in the process of bringing them back as we speak. They will not only provide additional capacity on our fire engines, but will provide some opportunity to provide relief so that we can consist, <clears throat> excuse me, sustain this rhythm uh, throughout the remainder uh, of the fire uh, season. We also look for initial attack. Our goal is to keep fires small and in coordination with not only CAL FIRE, but all of our local government fire departments throughout California, our federal partners, the Forest Service, National Park Service, all the firefighting agencies, we are in a seamless movement and coordination of resources to ensure uh, that folks get to where they need to get and keep these fires small. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, the California Highway Patrol Commissioner Warren Stanley. Thank you, Chief, and good morning. Uh, as far as the CHP's role uh, in these fires, we are in, in three phases. We are assisting with traffic control, evacuations, and also patrol of areas that have been evacuated in order to keep looters out. Uh, earlier in, in the fire, we had almost 200 personnel assigned statewide to the various fires, uh, and particularly at the car fire. Earlier this week, we had 138 personnel assigned to that fire. We've been able to draw that number down because uh, some of the actions that have been taken in the fire and that, so we've drawn them down. Now we have 58 personnel assigned to that fire. Specifically to the car fire, I just want to mention, and we've uh, made sure this information out there, Interstate 5 through the Reading area is open. Uh, although if you have to travel there, we ask that you travel through there, be even more cautious because we have law enforcement personnel and more importantly, our fire, uh, fire department personnel moving in and out of there with equipment uh, to help mitigate this fire. And to the members of the public who have been impacted by this fire, we very much appreciate your support. We know it's been very difficult for you. There have been a number of people who have lost homes or had to be evacuated, and we're very mindful of that. And as uh, the director and Chief Pemlott has said, we are doing everything that we can to mitigate these fires in order to get the people back, back into their communities. And with that, I'll turn it over to my counterpart from the uh, National Guard, uh, Major Baldwin. Thanks, Commissioner. I'm Major General Dave Baldwin with the California National Guard. As Director Gilarducci mentioned, we have over 1,200 personnel from the California National Guard, assisted by soldiers and airmen from both the Nevada National Guard and the New Mexico National Guard, providing a broad range of military support to civil authorities to help deal with these fires. We're fighting the fires on the ground and in the air. Uh, we're providing manned and unmanned surveillance systems to assist CAL FIRE with fire mapping and to assist OES and FEMA with damage assessments. We are also providing support to law enforcement in the forms of military police and Air National Guard security police officers that are providing uh, looting uh, deterrence. They're also assisting with repopulation efforts. And I'll be followed by our Commander in Chief, Governor Brown. You've heard there's a tremendous effort fighting these fires, and I want to personally thank all the firefighters who are on the line, uh, the members of CAL FIRE, uh, also the National Guard, and the thousands of inmates who are also on the line fighting to protect lives and uh, bring these fires to a, a quick close to the extent that's at all possible. It is very serious. Uh, we've seen the lives that have been lost, and I express my sympathy for that but assure people that whatever resources are needed, uh, we're, we're putting them there. Uh, we did allocate money in the budget for these kind of contingencies, and that money is there to do exactly what it's doing. So yes, this is serious. Uh, fires are now a more part of our, of our ordinary experience. Uh, the predictions that things would get drier and hotter uh, are occurring, and that will continue. Uh, we're in quite a cycle. Uh, but the predictions that I see that the more serious uh, predictions of uh, warming and fires uh, to occur later in the century, uh, 2040 or 2050, they're now occurring uh, in real time. And you can expect, unfortunately, uh, that to keep intensifying in California and throughout the Southwest. We're part of that process of the Mediterranean climate that is being impacted uh, by the changing weather. So. We'll be glad to take whatever questions on this and anything else. Governor Brown? Yeah. Uh, the fire season is longer than ever. It's hotter out there. What do you see in the next couple of months? 
Is this the first of a big fire? Are we going to see more big fires? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball here, but I would, would not be surprised if there were more fires. Obviously, there are going to be more fires. It's drier, and you get uh, the soil is drying, the vegetation is drying. That m makes for perfect kindling. And then these wind uh, events, wind storms, even uh, tornado-type uh, behavior are occurring. Uh, some of this is unprecedented, and we're learning as we go. But we're in a new normal. Uh, we're in a, a drought that uh, will uh, continue. Now, whether you technically call it a drought, uh, that's a matter for the weather people. But I would suspect there'll be more fires to come, and uh, more fires each year uh, for a very long time, because it's going to be a, a while before we uh, shift the weather back to where it historically was. Well, we have a, ma a forest management task force uh, to do uh, plan, uh, you know, uh, plan burnings to thin out the forest. Uh, there's also, you know, there are a number of things, in, both in warning and having enough trained personnel uh, being ready. So there's lots of practice. People are doing everything they can, uh, but nature is very powerful, and and we're not on the side of nature. We're fighting nature with the amount of uh, material we're putting in the environment and that material traps heat and the heat uh, fosters fires and the fires keep burning so that's where we are and we will have to mitigate and uh, the forest task force is is moving in that direction but I think from in the years to come you're going to see a lot more expenditure uh, on prevention and uh, adaptation and helping people uh, avoid these kind of fires or escape from them can you, yeah. you mentioned the budget. Can you talk about do you think there's going to be much of an impact on this year's budget given the growing unexpected costs? Well, not, and, well, and in the yeah. future, how much do you think that's going to have to be taken away? Well, there, there's money in this year's budget. Uh, we're enjoying the ninth year of recovery. So this is the period when money uh, accumulates to its highest degree. Uh, probably within a year or maybe slightly longer, uh, that money will begin to diminish and uh, not materialize because of the business cycle that will have the downturn. So we've got the money now, but I would say uh, it, things will get much tighter in the next five years uh, as the business cycle turns negative and as the fires continue. Now, maybe the fires will pause for a year or two, but over a, a decade or so, uh, we're gonna have more fire, more destructive fire, uh, more billions that'll have to be spent on it, more adaptation, more prevention. So all that is the new normal that we have to face. Uh, so far, this fire activity is a small part of our very large budget, but it is a growing part, and it will continue to grow as we adapt to the changing weather. In recent years, we've seen these fires not just uh, tackle wildfire air, but actual towns and whole communities. Right. And a lot of those folks are left trying to go back to yeah. moonscape. What's being done to allocate money to those people so they can get back on their feet? Well, there's, there's the uh, federal emergency relief. There are various uh, low-interest loans, and uh, there are various programs that are made available. Uh, this is going to become an, an increasing problem. California, historically, was not designed for 40 million people. It was designed for a few hundred thousand. And I know that because that was the number uh, for uh, eons. Uh, at least 12,000 years, maybe longer. Uh, no one ever thought to try to have 40 million people. That, that was just yesterday that we got that idea. And uh, even 20 million is rather recent. So we're in a bold, unprecedented experiment with 40 million people and 32 million vehicles that burn uh, flammable oil and gas. So we're going to have to adapt. We're going to change our technology. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to spend a hell of a lot of money, and there is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of uh, unpleasant events and but suffering as a result. Budget, um, for the past several years, what has been budgeted, um, the, the costs of these wildfires have exceeded what has been budgeted right. for the past several years. What more needs to be done to close that gap? Or does well, we, we have the money there. We have a rainy day fund. Uh, we're not down to our last dollar at this point, and we won't be for a long time. Even when things get tough, there's always 
available uh, borrowings that, that can be made available. But we, we, we're being surprised. Every year is teaching uh, the fire authorities new lessons. We're, not, we're in uncharted territory. Since civilization emerged 10,000 years ago, we haven't had this kind of heat condition, and it's going to continue uh, getting worse. I mean, that's the way it is. And some people don't want to accept that, and some people just outright deny it. But uh, I don't say it with any great uh, joy here. It's, uh, we're in for a really rough ride. And it's going to get expensive, it's going to get dangerous, and we have to apply all our creativity uh, to making the best out of what is going to be an increasingly bad situation, uh, not just for California, but for people all over America and all over the world. Governor, could you briefly talk about when the legislature comes back next week, one of the things that's being talked about is wildfire prevention, yeah. wildfire liability. Could you sketch what your goal of them talking about that is? I know you've put out proposed language, but overarching, what do you want them to do on the topic before the I want them to consider the proposal and uh, take uh, commentary from uh, informed citizens. Uh, we have a, a, a whole change here, and the rules that uh, are being followed were announced in uh, one or two uh, appellate opinions, but the, the, they don't represent the thoughtful and considered judgment of, Cal of the California legislature. So that's what I've asked them to do. What is the proper rule of liability? How are we going to allocate these costs? If you say it all is the utility forever, there won't be utilities. There will just be uh, public agencies, and it will all go through the tax system. So there's a lot of issues. Uh, people are on different sides. But my goal was to try to uh, find a, a reasonable balance that would reward uh, players, including utilities, for doing the right thing, but make them liable when they didn't take the steps that uh, common sense and prudence quick, would warrant. Quick follow. Do you believe PG&E when they say they are near bankruptcy if they have to pay out what they already owe? That I can't tell. I've heard that from PG&E, and I've heard trial lawyers and insurance companies who stand to benefit um, say the opposite. So the, these these are part of the legislative debate, uh, but there there is concern that uh, we could lose our utilities. And if we do that, our whole program of trying to uh, deal with uh, renewable energy and uh, mitigate climate change could be uh, adversely affected. So th these are all the issues that the legislature has to consider. And this is not, well, it is political, but it's more environmental and, and economic and uh, finding the best way forward. And that's why I think the legislature should deal with it rather than a three-judge appellate panel who writes a decision based on common law uh, principles from 100 years ago. Governor Brown, uh, has California done enough, um, particularly on the public notification side and the prevention side? Um, that, you know, you, the, they say that, that we're notifying people more and more through the uh, 911 reverse operations, through going door to door. I think the people in Reading and the surrounding area have worked very hard to uh, get people out of the fire. But, you know, the, the, we're not in a perfect world. Uh, the world has its, has its complexity and its uncertainty. And we're living with an uncertainty and trying to uh, do the best uh, we can. And I think uh, the people on the front lines are, are very amazing. The fact they wear all, the firefighters wear all that protective gear and they work in the heat, uh, it's just amazing that they're able, what they do. So I'm very appreciative to that and we'll continue to refine, we meaning local and state and federal um, person, the safety personnel, will continue improving as best they can. But no one expected a fire tornado, according to Mr. our fire chief here, no one ever knew about that. So we're getting new phenomenon, and that new phenomenon is we're in a new um, climate weather era. And so we have to learn. Um, and yes, if we knew everything we're going to know in five years, we'd maybe have a different warning system. But we're learning as we go. Uh, two two questions. One, yeah. um, uh, pg &E's CEO, Mitchell Williams, called the proposal that you offered um, insufficient. It's question one, do you agree with that? And then secondly, um, uh, CARB hasn't been taking into account uh, greenhouse gas emissions from fire. Do you think it ought to? Oh, yeah, sh for sure. They uh, taken into account. It is being taken into account. Mother Nature is taken into account, so 
car might as well record that fact with particularity. As far as um, the proposal, we uh, we drafted it in a way that had there's possibilities for improvement. Uh, that's the legislative process. We put the ball in play, and now we expect thoughtful people to reflect on this. This is serious business, and uh, how do you want to handle this? It, there's a lot of people who can tee off from their particular interest, but we want the legislature to represent all the people and sift through the various claims. And we'll be part of that. We'll help and give them the best thinking we can. Uh, good morning. Kim Segarra, State Prime Rescue Chief for Governor's Operating Services. We would like to have more resources out on the out on the ground. We're getting resources from local government. During the heat wave, they've also had a up, up uh, swing in uh, EMS calls, so we haven't got as much as we'd, we'd like. Uh, I would tell you that we've gone out of state for additional resources. Uh, they've been coming into the state. We, they've been very timely in that side of the house. But uh, I think the governor's clearly stated that uh, in the new uh, situation that we're dealing with, um, we could use more resources. And I think the one thing I would share with you is that at the local, state, and federal level, we've been very good at moving resources from one incident to another just in the nick of time. And so I think the cooperation and coordination that's taking place is unprecedented than, than in other previous years and probably unprecedented than anywhere else in the nation or maybe the world. Uh, there's still some capacity. Local government is also holding back some of those resources uh, for their own calls and because they're also worried about additional fires in their own area. How many firefighters are here in California from outside of the state? I couldn't give you an exact number. We'd have to get back to you, but there's probably a couple thousand just between federal and out-of-state uh, uh, state agencies and, and local government that have come into the state. Governor Brown, a question. Governor Brown? Yes. You were governor in the 1970s, governor now. We understand climate change, we understand that, but in terms of fire, wildfires, and their impact on towns and communities, what is the biggest change you've seen the time, between the time you were governor in the 70s and now? Uh, the biggest change is the fire season lasts so much longer and the fires are so much bigger. That's it in a nutshell. Senate Bill 1, you're talking about the, uh, yeah, yeah. the road building program and yeah. transit investment? Yes. Well, there will be more uh, deteriorated roads. There will be more unsafe bridges. And um, then people will react. And then they'll maybe impose toll roads or they'll do something. It, the things will get worse. But then after a certain period of time, then they'll probably have to get better. Well, look, there's no doubt that we didn't repair our roads on a proper schedule. Anybody that could have would have repaired roads uh, on a more regular basis. The, the uh, work that was needed was well over $50 billion. So that's real. And that has to be done. And if people say, well, we don't need the money that we now have, they'd have to get the money from somewhere else. And the big items are the University of California, uh, the prison system, the health system, uh, and other, and including firefighting. So uh, there will always be people who believe there's plenty of room for cutting out certain activities or doing them differently. But everybody has a different idea of what that might be. And so this, uh, the current funding, the $5 billion investment every year is absolutely vital uh, for road safety, bridge safety, and for having the kind of transit system that relieves even the congestion that we have. So if we go back and reduce local transit, uh, local buses, local um, uh, trains, uh, 
uh, and then we make our, uh, have our roads deteriorate further, uh, yeah, the life will be more difficult, the quality of life will not improve, and therefore I think people want to look right through to see the investment that we have. Also, given the fact that uh, a recession is coming, uh, we want to have that investment uh, so we can be providing this work, which we absolutely need, at a time when uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people will be losing losing their job. Governor, quick fire question. Who have you personally spoken to in the Trump administration, cabinet secretaries, White House? Yeah, the, the, the Homeland Security person. Secretary Nielsen? Yeah, she's talked. I've talked with her uh, last week. And how do you feel that conversation has been going? With it's always very pleasant when I talk with her. She's a, she's a very congenial interlocutor. Okay. Do, you, do you believe the tariff and trade <laughs> And seems to be very, I think she's very concerned. Uh, I mean, they are reaching out. Do you, you know, believe the tariff and trade war that seems to be going on now yeah. is going to uh, hasten the onset of recession? Well, first we have the, the, uh, the borrowing from the children to pay for the corporate tax breaks today. That is a stimulus. When you throw a trillion dollars of money into, the, into people's hands, one way or the other, uh, rich or poor, corporate or non-corporate, they're spending money. Because it's like everybody uh, was told, go borrow in your credit card for the next couple of months. That would create economic activity. At some point, uh, the tariffs and the natural cycle uh, will kick in. And I know people always think, would we have a recession? I just have to tell you, when I took economics at St. Ignatius High School in 1954, the good priest, Father Perkins, or rather it was Father Clark, went to the blackboard and he drew a line up and he drew a line down. And he drew it up and down. And he said, that zigzag is the business cycle. Now, economists are working very hard to smooth it out. That was 1955. That zigzag up and down is still with us. It's going to happen. And I would say uh, no more than two years, if we're lucky. And then away it goes. The only question is how big, how deep. And uh, with all this uncertainty about trade and all the other uncertainties that we're getting out of Washington, yeah, there could be, um, there could be financial um, consequences and dislocations. So yeah, it's a, it's a crapshoot right now, is the way I would say the big economy. Is there a message for cities and towns like Santa Rosa from last yeah. year who aren't Everyone should be ready and everybody should have a plan. How do they go about that? What, I mean, what does that even look like? Well, the, the, I, I asked uh, the, Mr. Pimlet just uh, half an hour ago, did anybody anticipate this fire tornado? And his answer was no. So we're still learning. And you, it just depends upon how cautious you want to be. I'm personally building a home that's just about complete, not that far from the fire zone. So I asked myself, uh, is this thing going to burn down? And that's certainly a very high possibility. So, yeah, I'm going to be on the alert, and everybody else better be on the alert. And if you're building in these areas, um, many will burn down at some point. Governor, a lot of people are hearing you say that they're seeing the footage of entire neighborhoods burn down, and people are understandably very scared. What do you have to say to the people of California? Well, we have a lot of good firefighters. We have people from adjoining states. We have the National Guard. We have uh, uh, 3,000 inmates doing their best. So, but you have to, each one has to be very careful. I mean, nature is not just uh, some toy for the capitalist system. It's a real underlying reality that we have to understand and respond to rather than think that because we're uh, a very rich part of the world that we get whatever we want. No, we don't get what we want, and there's a lot of uncertainty and uh, we have to kind of get used to that. And, uh, any plans to visit the fire scenes? Yeah, I'll, fire victims? not any plans this morning, but we're definitely, I've considered it, and this is our first step. I don't like to go to places where they're in the middle of firefighting just to look at people. I, I find that it's not always the most inspiring way to go.